Hallelujah. I'd like us to celebrate the angel of the house and his lovely wife, Pastor Petrock. Thank you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord because He's about to transform our lives in very dramatic ways. And let's thank Him because truly the heavens will be opened. people in a meeting those who just come around just as a ritual and there are those who just come because they suspect something good can happen and so they come to be witnesses but there are others who come with um, predeterminations for an encounter. They come with every sense of seriousness, every sense of focus. Go ahead and pray just within a minute or so. Ask the Lord to cause His Word to come upon your heart. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. The very prophetic song. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Can you help me, Koinonia? Open up the gate. Oh, that gate must be open. Open up the door. Will you open up? Open up the gate. the door we open up the gate we open up the gate the gate let the glory the The King of Glory rides through heaven's gate. Lord, we pray that let the glory of the Lord rest in this place. Let the King of Glory rise to heaven again. So will you open up, open up the gate? Open up the door. Just the voices. Go ahead, prophesy to your destiny. We demand. Open up the gate. 
open up the gates, open up the door. Go ahead and prophesy. You're not just speaking, you're prophesying. Hallelujah. Lord, we have come to compel portals to be opened in the Spirit. Lord, in the name of that is above all names we declare that you will do something in our life you will do something in this church we align the forces of the spirit together we invoke mantles we invoke anointings we invoke the presence of angels Ah, 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 ah. 
Elohim Ah Elohim Elohim Madonna there be an accurate dispensing of that which has been predetermined in the heart of the ancient of days. Oh great one, we invoke your presence in this place. Come and rest upon your people in power. Rest upon our minds and rest upon our hearts. Crystallize the realities of the spirit upon us. Quicken our hearts to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Grant us the keys of David, that which will empower us to reign. Teach us the ordinances of dominion, that will command power across our territory. Hallelujah. God is going very far with us in this conference. We have but limited time this morning. Far! Let me tell you, the journey is, we are taking a trajectory in the spirit. I trust that God will grant us a sustaining grace to navigate new planes and dimensions in the spirit until we arrive at that place that has been a portion for us. 
that place that will ignite the operation of new seasons in our life. we knock on that door and access will be given. Therefore by the mysteries of the message of God we ask for access in through vistas and portals in the spirit. We knock on doors that will authorize us to read into scrolls that have been sealed before now. We cry for access. We cry for access. Access into the mind of God. Access into the mind of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. 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 There is only one who is mighty. There is only one who is great. There is only one who was dead and is alive. And he is a custodian of the keys of heaven. Every access that was not initiated and sustained by him is witchcraft. He holds the keys of the mysteries of heaven. Upon his hands are the keys that grant us access to the deep mysteries of the kingdom. Lord Jesus, we are not ashamed to cry for mercy as we seek to explore things that are beyond the limitation of our age and our levels of comprehension. Our minds are so finite, we are unable to touch the substance of the Spirit as we ought to. We are only able to attempt this on the strength of your mercy that can be available unto us. Because the Bible says that your mercies are new every morning. And so we pray that the blood will precede our exploring your word this morning. 
grant us the same power to remain within the boundaries of truth and not to step into error we submit our minds to the influence of your spirit and we cause that you will communicate the truths of the kingdom with accuracy let it come with power sufficient to dethrone our unbelief let it come with power sufficient to dethrone the strongholds upon our minds and let the word compel an alignment in our minds that will become an access point for the things of the spirit to flow into our lives we give you praise we give you praise in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord walk up to two people greet them and um be back to your seat. Shiba kala posu tomla shnama. It's good to be here with us again. Please let's get to the business of the night. Every greeting will be after the meeting. God is so urgent upon our destiny. And he will grant us grace. And he will grant us strength in the name of Jesus Christ. We have two sessions and the first session uh, is already going on. We just have a time to teach the word and then we we'll have time to consolidate and minister to our needs in the evening. But that does not negate the fact that as we teach, God uh, is not able to touch and bless and lift because he's already doing it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, while Jesus taught, the power of God was present to heal. But uh, uh, I believe that the choice to allow the word to prevail this morning is part of our understanding of spiritual realities that it takes an understanding of the word to truly, truly bring deliverance and freedom and miracles and breakthroughs hallelujah we're discussing very briefly with pastor peter and his wife yesterday and um, we're just sharing and talking about a few things and um, i said how that the teaching of the word is god's system of breaking through strongholds and mindsets that limits people hallelujah i said something very powerful uh, that has come to bless me you know our mindsets are ideologies and planes of judgment you know our perceptions about god and life and a mindset becomes a stronghold when demon spirits come to build fortification along that thought pattern so that you are compelled to consistently think along that way and i said how that mindset are doorways in the spirit they permit the activity of demonic spirit or the activity of god the holy spirit and angels in the life of a believer if you're following can you say amen so the teaching of the word is very very important because that's god's strategy to dislodge these strongholds there are so many people who in our attempts to run away from the responsibility that we have to take over our destinies we find comfort in blaming demons and spirits and and curses and witchcraft and all of that and there is a place for that but you see beyond these demonic operations we must realize that the mindset of man can limit the operation of God in his life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 78 that they limited God. They limited God in the wilderness. Hallelujah. So it's important not only to preach but to teach. And the difference is this. To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. But to teach means to explain. It means to unravel mysteries. It means to bring men into the comprehension of a truth. 
Praise the Lord. And um, I was sharing again and we are discussing yesterday that the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not signs and wonders. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the ability to receive and interpret the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says, let a man so account of us apostles as stewards of the mysteries of God. So the true character of the apostolic ministry is the capacity to receive, to understand and interpret the mysteries of the kingdom. Because the mysteries of the kingdom are God's codes of operation. His way of doing things, his methods of executing his will in the earth realm. And kings reign upon the strength of their comprehension of mysteries. Hallelujah. And so I trust that as the Lord brings his word very briefly, we have very, very brief, just a few minutes to just crystallize a few things in our hearts. I like for your heart to be opened. Let this not just come as a name, open heavens. Truly, truly, God wants to do great things. Between this morning and this night, we have fasted, we have prayed. A number of us have been invited. I'd like us to open our hearts so that we can receive maximally. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right, let's get to the business of the day. It's very interesting the way God operates. You know, the way that... Um, the Bible helps us to understand God because in God's order of communication, He has His own, uh, I call them spiritual terminologies. Hallelujah. God's choice of words in the Bible are very meticulous and intelligent. He sustains in Himself an ability to communicate thoughts that are beyond our mind. And so He can name things in a way that describes the way he wants them to operate. And that is an aspect of his might and his wisdom. And so, the Bible is full of terminologies that conflict our human understanding or interpretation of such terminologies. Hallelujah. For instance, when the Bible talks about the concept of binding and losing, and opening and closing and doors and windows and you see the bible use all of these features that are used for a house praise the lord you see all of these similes and metaphors that the bible begins to use in an attempt to communicate spiritual realities and the bible tells us that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit because we must sustain another kind of intelligence to best interpret the things that the Lord would want to communicate. If we reduce the words and the terminologies in scriptures to fit our, our thought patterns as human beings, we will not be able to grasp the spirit of the communication of the things that are written in scripture. Are we following this morning? So every time you see words, that looks like that which you use normally in the earth realm. You must calm down and allow the Holy Spirit to precede your interpretation. Because oftentimes our concepts are flawed here in the earth realm. When the Bible talks of a father, our concept of fatherhood in the earth realm has been tampered by culture and our past experiences. And so, if we take on that plane of interpretation and judge God's perspective and idea of fatherhood, it will rob us of the ability to really get the spirit of the communication. Hallelujah. Our concept of servanthood, for instance, from the earth's perspective has been flawed because a servant is generally considered a weak one. A servant is generally considered one who has no rights and authority. But that's not God's idea. So Paul can say, Paul, a bond servant. And that word can offend you at once. Because your concept of servanthood means a slave. But God's perspective of servanthood is very different. 
Are you following me now? And so heaven has its terminologies and um, we must create a system that helps us to align to begin to interpret things from heaven's perspective. So when the Bible begins to talk about opening and closing, there are many places in scripture where it begins to describe the heavens. Now notice that it never says heaven. It says heavens. Heavens. Because our concept of heaven as we have always known has just been that place above where God lives. Unfortunately, there is, um, there is so much more to the word heaven than just the place where God lives. That sphere where he lives, the Bible calls it the heaven of heavens. Are you getting my point now? The Bible considers the astral realm to also be heaven. The Bible considers certain planes and dimensions in the spirit. Both demonic and godly, they are all called heavens. <laughs> hmm. You see that? And so our concept of what we know to be heavens must be edited so that we can understand that a thing came from heaven. We need to describe what plane of heaven. Because it is possible that by some kind of um, projection and astrology, men can touch into heaven, but not the heaven of heavens. And this is where some people have visited and returned with all kinds of misguided theology about encounters of heaven. And so there are many planes. Many planes and dimensions. The spirit is a sphere made up of many strata, and it will take the Holy Spirit to take you on a journey to navigate the path accurately to get into the dimensions where that which you will see is pure and true. Hallelujah. Not every part of the heavens is a conducive atmosphere for interaction. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Paul giving us the, the structure and the organogram of the satanic kingdom. He says, but against principalities, against powers, against what? Rulers. And then against spiritual wickedness. Where do they reign? In heavenly places. But they are spiritual wickedness. That's not my line of thought tonight. I just want us to know. That when we talk about heaven, there is a lot. It, it is a whole subject on its own. The book of Revelation gives us 12 signs to know that the plane you are in is the heaven of heavens. We are not going into that. There are 12 signs given in scripture that when you see, it will confirm to you that where you are is the dwelling place of God. The heaven of heaven. So in our context, let's get back to our context. We're talking about open heavens. Heaven is given from scripture the character of doors and windows. And the Bible lets us know that the heavens can open and close. Very interesting. It gives the heavens the character of doors and windows. And the Bible gives us an idea that the heavens have the capacity to be opened and to be closed. Genesis 11. Genesis 7 verse 11. Please follow me. Let's establish a few things. My spirit is fired up. That in itself is a mystery. Brothers and sisters. Mandalakata. See, study, study the metaphor. When God begins to speak, He uses certain metaphors or He begins to personify His thoughts to guide you so that you can comprehend the dimension of his explanation. So when he begins to describe man, he starts using the eagle. Or he describes man as a tree. He shall be like a tree. So his description is according to what he wants you to understand. This is the wisdom of God. And it is the path 
that every man of God must contend for is called utterance. It's not oratory. The name given to this spiritual ability is called utterance. The ability to relate that which you see in the spirit such that the men listening, regardless of their spiritual level, can come into that reality is called utterance. And Paul said, pray for us. Pray for us that utterance will be given. Genesis 7 verse 11. Beautiful. It's projected, so i like us to save time. Everyone read, please. Hiya, yeah, 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 yeah. My God. In the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month and the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the what? Fountains of the great deep broken up. And what happened? And the window stopped. He didn't say an heaven and the windows of the heavens were open because something was about to happen but the windows of heaven opened so not only does the Bible give us the picture that heaven is a place it gives us its dimensions and it, it gives us architectural information that the heavens have windows and that it can open so that certain things can happen in the earth realm. Genesis 8 verse 20. Genesis 8 verse 20. I'll try to be as simple as I can be this morning so that we can just pray and return fired up. Help us Holy Spirit. Genesis 8 verse 20. Everyone please. Did I say 8 verse 20? That must have been a mistake. I'm sorry. Isaiah, that's, that's a scripture for another time. Isaiah 24, verse 18. Isaiah 24, verse 18. Now everybody listen. It says something very interesting. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are what? Open. The windows from on high. Now this was Isaiah the prophet. I'm trying to show you how that the Bible gives us a description about the opening and the closing of heaven. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read together. One to read. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the 4th month, in the 5th day of the month, I was among the captives by the river Sheba. That what? The heavens were open, and I saw the visions of God. Luke chapter 4 from verse 25. Luke 4 verse 25. I just want to give us scriptures to support everything we are teaching this morning. God is taking us very far. Very far. Luke chapter 4 verse 25. Everyone read. One to read. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows in Israel. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the... Where... Hold on. When what? Where... You now see the structure and the character of the Bible. That means that the heavens have been opened at a point and have also been shut at a point. And that every time the heavens were open and shut, there was an effect in the earth realm. And so, in the days of Elijah, the man just knew that physically speaking, there was famine. No rain, the crops died, animals died, everything went down. But here the Bible gives us the mystery that was responsible for that operation. It says the heavens 
questions. Psalm 78, verse 23. Psalm 78, verse 23. Please read it. One to read. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of... So, you now see another picture. Not only can the windows of the heaven be opened, it says the doors of heaven can be opened. Very strange. The next thing I'd like us to understand this morning is that in scripture the opening of the heavens has been associated with five major things number one the rain the bible gives us a picture that the rains that fall upon the earth as haphazard as they look are controlled by the mysteries of the opening of the heavens and the closing of the heavens number two Abundance. Abundance is a mystery that only finds expression in the earth realm according to the opening and the closing of heaven. Mm. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Are we there? Please let's read it. It says, The Lord shall open to thee his good treasure. Stop. He explains to you what that good treasure is. The heavens. He shall open to you where? His treasury. Where certain things are kept. The Lord can open unto a man treasures. And the Bible says, The heavens. The heavens. The Lord shall open up to you his good treasure. Comma, the heavens. Number three. The opening of the heavens has been associated with visions and encounters. Visions and encounters. We saw that in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Sitting by the rivers. The heavens were opened. And all of a sudden, the prophet began to comprehend the visions of heaven. The opening and the closing of heavens have also been associated with judgment. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 23 and 24. Judgment. Judgment. And thy heaven that is over thy what? Now you, you, you get God's idea. Where is the heaven over your head? <laughs> See, I love the Bible. There is no level of earthly intelligence that qualifies you to understand scripture. The Holy Ghost must be the one who comes and guides you into that mystery. God will use words that will frustrate what you know. It says, and thy heavens that is over thy head shall be brass. Look how he confuses you now. Because our concept of heaven is some spiritual immaterial thing. Then he associates it with a hard metal called brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. This is judgment. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 19. See how God switches the puzzles again. I love God. See, let me tell you something. As you begin to grow in the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom, you fall in love with God in a way that you cannot even help. Because you will see His wisdom, the excellency of His person. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 19. Leviticus 26 
19. Now read. It says, and I will break the pride of your power. I will make your heaven iron. Look at God. In the first instance, he says, I will make the heaven brass and the earth iron. Now he says, I can even change it and make the heavens iron and turn the earth to be brass. We're talking of the mighty God. Let's continue. The fifth character that the opening of the heavens is associated with is an outpouring. An outpouring of the Spirit. An outpouring of signs. An outpouring of wonders. Mark chapter 1 from verse 10 to 11. The opening of the heavens has always been associated with an outpouring. Mark chapter 1, 10 and 11. And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open. And the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there came a voice. Now watch this. Are you seeing that two words were used there? One is heaven. And then the other one, heaven. When the Holy Ghost was about to come from the third heaven, all the other gates and doors had to open for him to access the earth realm. And then a voice echoed from heaven. No S. Where God dwells. And that voice reverberated through all of the planes of heaven until it got to the earth realm. Are we learning something this morning? Am I boring you? See, if we do not understand this, our idea about open heavens and closed heavens will just be okay. Open heavens just means greatness. God is on your side. Closed heavens, God is not on your side. There is so much more than that. There is so much more than that. What is the concept of open heavens and closed heavens? When the Bible begins to use these terminologies, what is exactly in the mind of God? Hallelujah. Number one, the concept of the opening and the closing of heaven is part of the ordinances of the heavens. That means the method of operation. God's system of operation. Number two, the opening of the heavens and the closing of the heavens they open up or close spiritual portals. Spiritual portals. Gateways. Over regions. Over churches. Over families. Over individuals. It's a mystery that opens up portals in the spirit. So that certain activities will begin to be possible for an individual, for a church, for a region, a territory, a family. So, God's idea of open heavens is not just that a physical atmosphere above you is open, but that something happens to the, the spiritual environment around your life such that portals in the spirit are open up to you and with the opening of those portals certain possibilities begin to be activated in your life here in the earth realm and this is what we seek to explore hallelujah it is possible that you can be born again and even filled with the holy spirit yet your heavens can be closed because i told you that there are ordinances of heaven they can open and they can close. Now, every time you see a thing happening and it's systemic in the kingdom, it means there are laws and operations that govern that action. Is that true? There is something that is done that causes the heavens to open. And there is something that when done will cause the heavens to be closed. 
Hallelujah. And very briefly, I want to unveil a mystery to us. Job 38. Manda hmm. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. You are about to hear something that will change your life. Please pray in one minute. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Zika prosh karandu se brahishida. Regada bradu zekete predika pariyasatai. Teach us the ordinances. Teach us the ordinances. Help us. Teach us the ordinances. Job 38. Let's turn there. God bless you. Job 38. Now, I have spent my life not only because by grace I have been called into the apostolic office, but I found myself, you see, when God begins to walk with you, there are different offices and dimensions. And together you start like white light. You know how white light comes uh, across an electromagnetic field and then something makes it to begin to diverge and we have all kinds of rays going different dimensions. That's how it is with our spirit walk. When you begin to walk with God, you come to a place where you find out that your spirit man begins to adjust to certain dimensions of God more than others. That adjustment begins to describe the mandate and his mantle upon your life. And so three people can start their Christian experience. Praying, loving God, fasting. Eventually, one person's passion for prayer and fasting will move to another dimension that is unusual. He may not have an explanation for it, but it's the divergence that leads you to destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? Another person's passion for souls begins to be unusual. You will even think he's faking it, but it is, it is the distribution of offices and graces as given by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And for others, you find yourself carrying burdens you have no business carrying. Hallelujah. And so you're fasting for two or three days and you are not discussing anything about your life. You are carrying burdens you have no business. You blame yourself for things that are not your concern. It's not your fault. It's an operation of the Spirit tilting you towards the area where He wants to use you. Is God blessing us this morning? Hmm. So part of the apostolic ministry is that you find out that there is a calibration between your spirit man and the throne of heaven such that whenever there is a shift you feel it in the earth realm and you know that's what I was trying to describe that's you see the prophets carried out both prophetic and apostolic duties in the Old Testament because Christ was not manifest an apostle Titus 1 verse 1 is the Greek word apostolos envoys of a king they are sent they they held the highest secrets in any kingdom. And they were sent by a king. And so when Jesus died and resurrected and there was that distribution, certain things began to happen to those men. An alignment, a change of state, a reconfiguration. Hallelujah. And so I found myself passionate about exploring what I have come to call the mysteries of the kingdom. Everyone say mysteries. Let me talk for one minute about mysteries before we establish this. I'm saying this so that you appreciate what I'm about to show you. Now, when, when you study the operation of occultists and all of this, they operate what we call mysteries. A mystery is a hidden truth. A mystery is a secret code of operation. Please, if you're writing, write. A mystery is a hidden truth. It's a secret code of operation that is responsible for activating possibilities. Mysteries. There are all kinds of mysteries that are revealed in Scripture. And let me tell you something. The strength of Satan, I've thought again and again, that the strength of Satan is not so much about his power. The strength of Satan is the residue of the advantage that he still uses. 
the advantage of him being the custodian of the mysteries of the heavens when his name was Lucifer. Are you getting my point now? While Satan was, I hope you know that the name devil or Satan is not the name of a, a thing called Satan. It's a generic name. They shall cast out devils. Not one devil. Satan's original name according to his creation was Lucifer. And the name Lucifer means light bearer. It means the custodian. Satan's office in heaven by creation was he was the librarian of heaven. The custodian of the mysteries of God. Can you imagine? And so his making had to be meticulous in design to accommodate his ability to handle that office. Let me tell you something. Dominion is the summation of your comprehension of mysteries that grants you authority. When you speak in the spirit, you speak on the strength of the mysteries that support your statement. That's why a man can speak over a territory and nothing happens. But there is a mystery that sponsors your audacity. So when you speak, you see, mysteries translate as light in the spirit realm. So you can look at a man and see the summation of the mysteries he has understood. It is, it is equal to the illumination that comes from his spirit man. This is why Satan, see, that's how you measure the age of angels. The age of angels is according to the light that they emit. And the light that they emit is according to the presence of God they have come close to. That's what made Lucifer perfect in beauty. Let's get to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Listen, brothers and sisters, as we seek to explore spiritual growth, I want us to come into a point where we realize that before man came, there have been many dispensations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A dispensation is a timeline of existence. And there have been millions of dispensations. Our dispensation is just one out of the infinite dispensations that are and will be. And so when John was caught in the isle called Patmos, he was told to write the things that were. That means he was said, John, before your arrival, heaven had been operating. Even before the manifestation of this man called Lucifer. I hope you know Lucifer was created. There was a day in the mind of God where he thought about an office that Lucifer would occupy. So what then was happening in the heavens before Lucifer came? Because for, now, for many of us, our scope of Christianity has been a battle between Lucifer and God. Before his manifestation, heaven had been running. Listen, even before Lucifer, there was already what we call sons of God. Sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It's the name of an office in heaven. Ezekiel 28. Verse 12, we're going to run. Ezekiel 28. Something is happening in this place. Son of man, take up a lamentation against the king of Tyre and say unto him, this is the description of the making of Lucifer. Look at me. This creation happened before Genesis 1. Are you getting what I'm saying? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and so on is not the first creation. It's only one out of the many creations. There is this creation. There is the creation of Job 38. There is the creation of Isaiah 14. There are so many creations in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis 1 verse 3 was not even a creation. It was the remedy of something that went wrong. Ezekiel 28. If you are a Christian and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, join me as we read. Just follow me. Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of what? Wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Please read if you are a Christian. Want to read. Stop. That was where? <laughs> Is that in your Bible? It said that was in Eden 
And in case you think it's not that Eden, he said the garden of the Lord. Satan was given that. I want you to know why Satan hates you. You came into the middle of a story you don't even know anything about. They just gave birth to you. Satan hates your father and your mother. There is an old story that predates your existence. And if you do not find out, you will remain a victim. Why does the devil not want me to marry? The story is beyond your dispensation. It's a beef between God, angels, and Satan. That's why when they met in the book of Jude, Satan and Archangel Michael would meet one more time. And Satan looked at him. I've not forgotten what you did. Michael said, I don't have your time. You do not raise a railing accusation against Moses. Now, the Lord rebuke you. Ah! Let me tell you something. This drama is an old drama. We are only playing our role to give way. That's why Paul said, let no man trouble me. I'm not ignorant. There is upon me a mark, a symbol of traveling in the spirit. See, there is what you know that will make demons run away from you. It's not go away. Go, I cast you. No, what mysteries. You must stand upon something. And when you look at the handwriting on the wall, when others are just seeing the writing, you say, I know what this means. It is, it is activating something in the spirit. Let's get to the word. Verse 14 of the same Ezekiel. Okay, let's, let's see at verse 13. God bless you. It says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz. Trust me, Satan can make men rich. He knows where the precious stones and metals were. We only know bits and pieces where they were lost after the judgment. Satan, it was his object of creation. I will tell you what happened very shortly. You will hear that story. The emerald and the covenco, the gold, the workmanship of thy timbres and of thy pipes, music, was prepared in the, in the day that thou was... Satan has a date where he was created. There was an exact date one day before that day, he did not exist. Are you getting what I'm saying? So Satan is not the opposite of God. How we insult God because of our mentality and what culture and occultism has, has taught. There's no time I would have shown you seven angels that even existed before the manifestation of Satan. There is ranking in the spirit. Satan was given a position that would have made Michael and Raphael. See, all these angels, you notice there is L behind their names. It's their office attached to God. Michael, Raphael, Uriel, Gabriel. These are their spiritual names. They are not just Mexican names or Jewish names. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raphael was the angel in charge of the healing of systems. Let's not get into that. Please. Anyway, so Lucifer was created and he was made to walk the garden of God. Watch this. Lucifer was given the office to hold the mysteries of God. Do you know what that means? Every day, the angel saw the illumination in Lucifer increasing. Because you increase according to the mysteries you know. So it granted him access to the presence of God. Now watch this. The angels honored him because of that office. Although he was not the oldest. Now age, I told you. The Bible says, praise ye the angels who excel in light. That's how you measure age in the realm of the spirit. You don't measure age by passage of time, chronos. No, it doesn't exist in the spirit. You measure age by light. That's why Jesus showed us his age when he transfigured himself. He was pure light. Revelation at its fullest. And the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. That's how we grow in the spirit. We are changed. So though our outward man may perish, but the inner man keeps growing according to the light that we receive. 
Is God helping us this morning? So Lucifer was created. Now when Satan started, he had access to read these mysteries of God. The mysteries of creation. The mysteries of the structure of angels. The mysteries of governing things in the earth realm. Watch this. Satan stretched that curriculum from border to border. And at a point in time, the excellency of his wisdom was notable. Even among the angels and other beings in heaven. And Satan said to himself, I will exalt myself. Are you seeing what would have given him the audacity to be God? He said, if all this mystery is what makes God sit on that throne, I have finished the curriculum. I can be God by myself. And while that happened, God kept quiet and was watching. And this is what Satan did. Satan gathered many other archangels. Leviathan, Mammon, Abaddon. See that? All of these beings today that are associated with wars. These were all the inhabitants of the heavens. And he gathered them together and said, Come, lead a rebellion and let us dethrone the mighty one. I know all his options and I know what he can do. Trust me, I have held the libraries of heaven for long. I have read diligently and I have searched. I know. Are you getting my point now? And so the angels agreed. Now, and see, Satan, some of these things I share to you are direct revelations of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear Him. And he will show them his covenants. Praise the Lord. Let's hurry up. Now, for Satan to be able to do this successfully, watch this. There were two things that he needed. Number one, the cooperation of the angels. And he was able to present his manifesto. And he won one third of the angels in heaven. Can you imagine that? One third of the angels in heaven were lured into that plan. It was a secret plot. And when all of that happened, for them to be able to carry that now, all right, let's see. There is what we call the principle of translation, meaning that in heaven, you cannot do everything at your current state. Are you getting me? The job you are given requires a dressing for it. Are you getting, you, you get what I'm saying? So, for the angels to carry that assignment, they needed to change their state from that topaz and onyx and the rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? And Satan assured the angels that if the plan failed, he knew what to invoke to bring them back to their original state. Just follow me. Whether you believe it or not, just follow me. Eventually you'll believe it. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now watch this. The Bible tells us there was war in heaven. John was given the privilege to see a picture of this. And when there was war in heaven, Lucifer attempting to arise and manipulate the mysteries of heaven to work in his favor. All of a sudden, they changed themselves. And while they were trying, Michael alone, the archangel, he was empowered and he went out. And the Bible says, that great dragon fought against Michael. Are you getting me? And he prevailed not. And he was casted down. Watch this. In a bid for Lucifer and all the angels to quickly return to their original state, God revealed a fresh mystery that had never been seen in heaven. And he trapped them at once. They could not return to the state of man. They could not return to their state. That's why the Bible says, listen, the Bible says the angels that kept not their original estate. Are you seeing the story now? Now, that punishment has done two things to them. Number one, the spirit of man and our design does not rest until you are in your stable state. We know that in physics. Is that true? There is a state of equilibrium. Are you getting my point? Now, the reason why demons search for 
among other things is an attempt to gain that state of equilibrium Jesus gave us a picture when a demon leaves a man something happens am I blessing you there is a state of equilibrium that Satan and the forces of darkness will never be able to return to and we see that in the book of Job when the sons of God Jesus had not died but the Bible is talking about sons of God I told you the sons of God is an office now many of you may say the Bible says unto no angel did he say thou art my son sons of God are not angels there are many beings in heaven there are four living creatures <laughs> is that not true there are 24 elders who are they are they angels are they human beings there's the representation of the the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles God's leadership organogram that makes up the foundations of the heavens is that true there is the tree of life the garden of Eden is still intact I hope you know those who are trying to find it are finding it in futility revelations the tree of life is still there the garden of Eden is still there the river that flowed from Eden is still there this time it flows from the presence of God what was I to talk about before we got to this Lucifer thing huh? Job 38 let's walk Job 38 Job 38 <laughs> yes yes please if, if you my time will be up I'm supposed to teach this morning and then um, we'll come back in the evening theologically speaking the book of Job remains a mystery and the reason why it is still a mystery is because the context of that dispensation could not be associated to any dispensation other than Genesis. So theologians had to agree that it was woven somewhere between the first and the last chapter of Genesis. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us that in the days of Job, now watch this. Please, I'm beginning to talk to us now. We're, uh, we're unraveling this mystery of open heaven. Job was a very rich man. He was not rich just for nothing. The Bible makes us to understand that this guy was the richest man in the east. He was blessed and so on and so forth. He had children. The writer of Job, whoever that person was, gave us a privileged information that something was happening in the heavenlies. Job chapter 1. Don't turn there. The Bible says, And at a certain time, the sons of God came for a meeting. And Satan also came. Is that true? Now, in the earth realm, if you were in the days of Job, you wouldn't know that something was happening. It's a privileged information given to us, the readers. And let's see what transpired. The Lord told Satan, he said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And Satan said, In my voyage to and fro, I met this man. That means Satan was agreeing that, Look, I, because I've become restless now, I can move up and down. And I came across a particular man and I saw a mysterious fortification around him that rendered me powerless. Satan testified that he could not touch a man. What was the mystery of Job's protection? That no power, even Satan testified in the heavens that he could not touch him. And he said, have you not built a hedge around him and all his properties? And God said, okay, go ahead and touch whatever you touch. Preserve his life. Brothers and sisters, watch this. Just stop this keyboard for one minute. You'll play it back now after one or two minutes. I want to say something. A discussion happened in the heavenlies. While it was happening, a man was minding his business in the earth realm. All of a sudden, he received the result of a discussion that was finished in the heavens. He got up in the morning and did not know that there was a meticulous discussion and he was the subject of that discussion. Are you getting my point? 
All of a sudden, this man was lashed by woes he could not account for. And his wife stood by him. And the wife looked at him and wondered. Watch this. And then another meeting was held when Job was busy discussing from the earth's realm. Stretching his intellectual prowess from border to border in an attempt to unravel what would have been his fault. You're not understanding the mysteries of the kingdom will put you at a serious disadvantage in the earth realm. You will only become a victim of things that happen. I refuse. I cannot be a victim of what I was not involved in. No way. No way. No man will sit down in the heavens and make discussions over ministries. <laughs> I've prayed for people, so many people, and I've seen how people can be victims of things they are not involved in. Hallelujah. And then the discussion happened a second time. And this time around, it was his health. The wife thought nothing happened to her because she was strong. It's just that the, she was not part of the discussion. The discussion did not involve her. It was all about Job. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, boils started coming out of Job's body. You would have called it measles. You would have called it Ebola. You would have called it chicken pox. The Bible says is the conclusion of a well-organized meeting in the heavens. Are we following now? And then, something happened. The Bible says all the friends of Job came. Settling. For seven days, they sat down, pastor. They could not talk to Job. Because they said, what? They started stretching. We are rich men. So there are principles we understand. Let us explore whether astrology, science, whatever. In an attempt to explain what would have been the reason for this man's predicament. Hallelujah. After seven days, they said, Kai, now we, we must say something. Job, you are a sinner. This is our conclusion. Uh, we have stretched you are a sinner. Job said, be careful. Be careful. Don't call me a sinner. And after that explanation, there was a young boy among them called Elihu. He still kept quiet. He said, no, Job is a good man. Job is a good man. But what would have happened? And Job, that young man just said, look, there is a spirit in man. I don't know the answer, but I know that this one is an explanation that must defy age, race. That means, look, let's, let's find a way of depending upon the spirit if we need explanation. And it gave Job an idea. Job, in his pain, looked unto the heavens and he said, Lord, I demand and I invoke your presence appear before me we need to talk now this is dangerous do you know what it what spiritual formula did job use to invoke god because god came that's where we are going to right now job said every man has been unable to unravel this mystery whatever it is let me hear from you god i invoke you by the mysteries i know show up 38. Let's go there. Job 38. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. The Bible says they know not neither do they understand. They grow up in darkness and so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but ye shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. The Lord is upgrading our lives. There is something you are standing on that is making your status higher in the spirit. It is on account of that 
you will be able to tell one, be blessed. And you will invoke something in the heavens that must make that blessing come to pass. Job 38, verse 1. Okay. We have to tie it down. have a few minutes now. Is God helping us this morning? Are we learning something? Job 38. Finally, when Job invoked the presence of God, Elohim or Eloha now showed up. And then the Lord, the owner of the earth, he would not deny himself nor his laws. He came. The Bible says he came out of where? <laughs> Notice when Elijah was going to heaven, what took him? What took him? Chariots of horses, but they came in a... So we see another mystery about the opening of heaven. Ah! What do you not know in this earth? You wake up in the morning, sleep back in the night. You pass mysteries without knowing what is happening. And sometimes you meander into a mystery that you know nothing about. And your life begins to navigate across a path. A man gets up in the morning, brothers and sisters, like phone rays. The same way we are in this room and there's empty and empty salad. That's how mysteries have been invoked and flying over the earth realm. It is they that know their God. They shall be strong and shall do exploits. It will amaze you how that there have been many signs around our lives. Signs of caution, signs of breakthrough, signs of open doors. But because we do not understand those ordinances, we did not know how to align and seasons came to pass us by. But tonight God has come to strengthen us by his spirit so that we will sustain the eyes of eagles to start reading upon the line. The Bible says the sons of Isaac, they understood the times. They knew how to read and write in the spirit. For some of you at the end of this teaching, you will know that what you have been sensing is called the change in seasons. You will know that what has been making you fast and pray for days, you've lost appetite since last week. All of a sudden, an answer will be given to that spiritual puzzle. Some of you, you will now find out why in the last three days, some mysterious dreams have been happening. You've been seeing yourself empowered by an agency you cannot understand. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things. Men reign in life. Some of you, what you probably have seen are a writing in the spirit that danger is coming to your family. But tonight you will not only see it, there is grace to speak to the heavens and align the forces of the spirit to work against evil to us. It is called mystery. Job 38, verse 2. <laughs> help us, O Lord. We are going to run. Whoever is projecting, please help us. Let's make it fast. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? This is God now. God was so provoked by Job. He said, guys, Job, shut up. I've been hearing you make a lot of blunders. I know you are a rich man. You are called a great man in the earth. But who is this that is speaking out of ignorance? Job, you've been saying a lot of things. I'm standing from my perspective. And I know what is happening. But you are speaking out of your ignorance. He said, let me start probing you now. And see how much of the mysteries of the kingdom you know. Question 1. Let's go to verse 3. Guard up thy loins like a man. And I will demand of thee. Answer me. He said, where was thou? Question 1. When I laid the foundations of the earth. You claim you know mystery so much, Job. Let's do some, some contest with the ancient of days. Are you aware that the earth even has foundations? Geography tells us that the world revolves. Our master and creator tells us there was a day the earth was laid with foundations. Exact foundations. Huh. Declare 
if thou hast understanding. Verse 2. Oh, hold on. Just um, the next question. Sorry. Who has laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest. Who has stretched it upon the line? God gives us an idea that an exact architectural work was done. When the earth was about to be made. Next verse please. Whereupon are what? The foundations fastened. Who laid the cornerstones? So there was a foundation laying ceremony for this earth. And the Bible tells us the activities that happened on that day. What happened? When the morning stars sang together and... Mando kapraski dabaladaba. Before earth, the morning stars, what we call sons of God, they sang and rejoiced. He said, Job, you claim you know so much. Let me humble you right now. Next verse. Who shut up the sea with what? Ah. So there is a reason why the seas are not supposed to go beyond certain borders. That means every time a flood happens, we know that a spiritual formula was manipulated to make the doors of the seas to open up. This is the creation that happened before your Genesis 1. When it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb, when I made the cloud a garment and thick darkness a swaddling band. Next verse. And break it for it my decreed place. And set bars and doors. And said, He that O shall thou come. But no further. And here shall thou proud waves be stayed. Let me tell you what this means. Do you know what witchcraft and occultism is all about? Witchcraft and occultism is all about manipulating spiritual laws. Are you getting my point? The, the strength of witchcraft is their ability to manipulate spiritual laws and tilt the earth to their advantage. The laws that are being manipulated are exact spiritual laws. But it so happens that for a thing to be of God, that process must be both initiated and sustained by the Holy Ghost. That's the difference between that which is of God and that which is witchcraft. So Moses can throw his rod, it becomes a serpent. Pharaoh throws his rod too. And it becomes a serpent. Pharaoh was telling Moses, I know the law you touch and I've done it too. I can prophesy but not by the Spirit of God. And what I'm saying will come to pass. Because it is a manipulation of spiritual laws. Are you getting my point? I can pray for you. Our traditionalist pastor before Christianity came to Nigeria. Were they not healing the sick? Please tell me the truth. Were they not healing the, the sick? They conjure herbs and drop it on your wound. And in two days it dries mysteriously. A manipulation of spiritual laws. This was the gist that the sons of men, those fallen angels, told the daughters of men that made them marry them. You think they just came to them like that? No. That's what the devil told Nimrod Kush. Genesis 11. The official origin of witchcraft. Where he killed his father Kush and married his mother Samiramai. And wanted to build a city whose top will reach the heavens. Let's go to verse 24 and run down there to 33. I'll just say that and then we'll pray and then we'll continue in the evening. The Lord will do mighty things this evening. 24. But what way is the light parted which scattered from the east wind upon the earth? Hi! Quantum physics failed. Quantum physics failed again and again. I know we have given men Nobel Prizes. We will see how ignorant we are when we see Jesus. The Bible tells us that there is a specific east wind that has been authorized to part light when it comes to the earth. 
When was the last time your professor taught you that in quantum physics? You see why quantum physics is hard? Because it's an attempt to explain a mystery that is only known spiritually. Next verse. Who had divided the water course for the overflowing of waters or the way for the lightning of thunder to cause it to rain in the earth? Look at the mysteries that must happen for rain to fall. God was explaining it to Job and said, Declare if you know it. You just see rain fall, but you don't know the codes that must be in place for rainy season to happen. And yet he was unraveling the mysteries. Verse 27. Let's just go as fast as we can. We are stopping at 33. To satisfy the desolate and wasteful ground and so on and so forth. Let's go to verse 30. Out of whose womb came the eye? My goodness. Now he goes to another dimension again. Eyes. He gives eyes the picture of being born. I thought they told us that eyes is as a result of condensation. Stalagmites, stalactites, etc., etc. The Bible says, out of whose womb? There are two spiritual mysteries that the Bible says are born out of the womb. One is the morning. What you call your morning. It says the morning is born out of a womb. Who has, who has gendered it? The waters are sheet as with a stone. And the face of the deep is frozen. Next verse. Can thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades or lose the bands of the Orion? Now he has gone to the second heavens. This is the astral realm. He has finished now and he has moved to the astral realm. Where astrology and Babylonian magic and Egyptian magic, that is the strength of the magicians. He now moves to their realm. He said, who has been able to know how to lose these bands? These are names of constellations in the heavens. 32. Can thou bring forth the mother of in his season? Or can thou guide Actoros with his sons? I don't want to go into this. But when you study class classical Greek philosophy, right? They studied the constellations and they studied the interaction between gods that were out of this realm. That was where they called Paul and Barnabas, Zeus and Hermes, the gods of oratory, the gods of communication. When you study Greek philosophy, they do a lot in teaching about all of these things. But here is where we are landing this morning. 33. Let's read it together. Everyone want to read. If we can have it unamplified, that would be great. He said, Knowest thou what? The ordinances of heaven. Do you know the ordinances of heaven? That you will be able to enforce their influence or their dominion in the earth realm. This is the key to our study in this conference. As simple as it is. Is there amplified? Okay, no amplified. No problem. You can just go back to it. Is there, do you know anyone with amplified? I just like the rendition. Anyone? It said, do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you establish their rule upon the earth? Two questions. If we can answer that question. Brothers and sisters, look at me. Even before the end of December, whatever you could not recover will come to you cheaply. Things will... It, no, no, no. It's not a prophecy. It's going to be the result of your understanding. It will happen so naturally to scare you because there are laws that hold and permit things in this realm. Question one. Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? The ordinances describe the operation of the heavenly. By some spiritual means, have you been taught how the heavens regulate their activities? 
And if you have, the second mystery is have you been taught how to take those mysteries and make them rule here in the earth realm. There is no one like my God. There is no one like my God. See, there are things that when you know, your worship becomes a response to a dimension. Not just a song that was raised that you have to follow. The moment you raise a song, there are too many mysteries that force you to compel, to continue in that worship. That's why Ezekiel saw the worship in heaven. Many years later, John would still see the worship and they did not stop. It was a response. A response. When Jesus appeared, in Matthew chapter 13, from verse 11, he made a statement that has become our hope of true dominion and walking under open heavens. He said, it has been given unto you that you will know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Job was asked a question and Job could not answer. Have you been granted access to know the ordinances of heaven? And has any entity taught you how to make those laws operate in the earth realm? So that you can align yourself with spiritual realities. And when Jesus showed up, he said, finally, for you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. When we come back in the evening, we are going to be discussing three keys. Number one, the keys of David. Number two, the keys of knowledge. And then we'll talk about a few things. And we will discuss what happens to a man when the heavens are closed over him and the mystery of sustaining an open heavens and will give the Holy Spirit room to blow this roof open tonight and just invade us and take us to realms and dimensions there will be strong impartations tonight I trust the Lord that beyond healings and all of this there will be an upgrade a change of state spiritually that God will grant us eyes to see and God will grant us ears to hear. Many of us will hear sounds in the spirit tonight and many of us will rise to new dimensions. Rise up on your feet. Go ahead and begin to pray. We have a few minutes. I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit. Just let everything you have received drop. Instrumentally, you can come up. Go ahead and let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray, pray. Something heavy has landed on your spirit. You may not understand the details, but just, just pray. Granting us access to the mysteries of the kingdom that will make us strong, that will make us mighty, that will make us walk in dominion, that will compel the heavens to be opened, never to close again. Pray. Pray. This in itself is a mystery. Rokotopakata balada bakasa praga de balada bos. Zeta praposta panda kata praga de balada bos. Alleluia. 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 Three prayer points. 
and we'll end it for this morning. The first prayer point. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you. He says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. In Jeremiah chapter 1, he told the prophet, he said, What seest thou? What you see and your interpretation, your perception of spiritual realities can translate to your dominion or otherwise. The first prayer point, Lord, do something strange upon my spiritual perception. Let there be an activity of the spirit that will take me to a higher plane of spiritual perception. Open your mouth and pray house on the rock. Let there be a quickening of the spirit. Ah, open up the vistas of heaven. In this conference, let our eyes be open. Let our eyes be open that we might see. That we might see. Grant us eyes that we may see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ezekiel chapter two from verse one and two. He said, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The Spirit entered me when he spake unto me. And he set me upon my feet. The Bible says, They that sat in darkness, a great light. Listen. It's one thing for the word of God to come. But it's another thing for the spirit of that word. To gain entrance upon your spirit man. And begin to carry out the activity of quickening. He said, You will only arise and shine not when your light is around but when it comes to you hallelujah you are going to pray and you are going to say lord break through the strongholds of my mind break through my ideologies invade my belief system until your spirit gains ground upon my spirit lift your voice and pray Break through the walls. Rattle my theology. Man, take a take a Take a press, caparicata. And the spirit entered me. And the spirit entered my ministry. And the spirit entered my business. And the spirit entered my life. And the spirit entered my family. Mateka protokata, sekata prakata balana bos, om prakata pakate, lekata prakata bos sotoba, rokata protokate, sekate koponda, ekreto bos sotoba kate, rakata boko sopa da ba 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 ba. Come on, house on the rock, please. Sekate protosi ba 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 ba. Mande krete bos sotola ba kotiara. Hallelujah. Let's establish the last prayer point and then we'll pray. Oh, it will be mighty tonight. Please, everyone that you love, this is not just a cajole for invitation. But His Majesty will sit upon this room this night. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. We are going to pray. Nothing happens until prophecy precedes it. 
You are going to call tonight what you want it to be. You are going to pray for you. Not just for house on the rock. The Bible says, and whatever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Whatever he called it, if you call it your night of open heavens, so shall it be. If you call it your night of settlement, so shall it be. Lift your voice, house on the rock. Be generous. Call it. Man, take up, 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 up. This is the night when my ministry will gain wings in the spirit. This is the night when strange anointing will land upon my life. This is the night where the spirit of revelation will come upon me. Prophesy, this is the night where upon house on the rock, the curtains that close the heavens will be stretched from one border to the other. Makato Brekete Sekete Barata Likata Hallelujah Hallelujah Please pick up your Bible, the last scripture and I'll drop the mic just to prepare us for tonight Hallelujah I'll just give us three instructions to prepare us for tonight John chapter 1. Where's my Bible? John chapter 1. Let me just read the scripture quickly. Please, if you've, if you've never been serious with any meeting that was organized by this church, I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take this one seriously. Hallelujah. I just feel led to tell you why. Because tonight must be a night of exodus. This is the tenth month. Hear me. And after many plagues, Pharaoh refused to let the nation of Israel go. But after the tenth plague, he said, This last plague shall I bring upon Pharaoh and upon the nation of Israel. After that, he must let you go. Must let you go. So God is going to be doing mighty things. John chapter 1. Verse 50. Nathaniel finished talking about Jesus Christ. And he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And something happened. Verse 50. Jesus gave Nathaniel a word of knowledge. And said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under a fig tree. Believest thou? This is the prophecy for tonight. Thou shalt see greater things than these. What will you see? 51. Let's all read together and agree. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter, you shall see what? The heavens opened. And you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Please take out time for at least 30 minutes. That's instruction number one. Between now, when does it start in the evening, sir? Five. Please, five is when you should be here. Be very prayerful. No time for joking around. Any destiny killer hanging around you, wasting your time, tell him we, you can talk to me tomorrow. I mean business. I'm flogging it out with destiny tonight. Hallelujah. Now is not the time to be distracted. At least between now and five o'clock, Take any 30 minutes you can and just blast in tongues. Just lock yourself and say, this is it. I'm holding on to the hands of God tonight. My heavens must be open. Hallelujah. Number two, as much as possible, please come with someone that you fully desire for his or her heavens to be open. There are people who love you and love God no matter how stubborn they are. Make sure that they come. If there's no seat, they'll sit on the floor. No problem. We will allow it just for this night. If there's no seat, you will stand up for them and let them sit. No problem. You won't die. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then finally, come with a heart, a, a capacity. I don't know how to put this. Change your vessel tonight. He said when there was no more vessel, the oil 
Because what will come tonight will be heavy. I like for your kappa. I came here with all my heart. I was telling Pastor Pete yesterday. We came here to align with the spirit and download something that will change the course of your life. Praise the Lord. Those who are sick, who are sorry, will deal with us in the night. And every other thing, we'll be trusting God to bring words of clarity and prophecy. Lift your hands and thank Him for this meeting. We bless you.